Let's take another look at an example of finding the volume of solar revolution using the shell method. Uh, in this situation though, our axis is not gonna be the x-axis or the y-axis. In fact, we're gonna pick a vertical axis, x equals two, um, and it differs from the y-axis right here. Let's take the region, um, the region given by the parabola y equals x minus x squared, and we want to integrate that region below that parabola but above the x-axis around the line x equals two. Now, if we're gonna use the shell method, our cross section should be parallel to the axis. So you see this is the type of cross section we would want. The thickness is gonna be dx. We're gonna integrate with respect to x because that's how thick this thing is. And so let's go through the shell method and see what we need. The volume of a shell, remember, it's two pi times our radius times the height times the thickness, uh, which is a delta r, all right? We've already taken care of delta r, we're gonna integrate with respect to x, so this is gonna be a delta x. Your radius, uh, well, let's actually, let's do the height next. The height is how tall is that, how tall is this uh, rectangle gonna be? The rectangle from, goes from this point on the function down to the x-axis. The height's just gonna be the y-coordinate of this point right here, x comma y. And as this is, is, this, this is a function, the y-coordinate will be given as x minus x squared, like so. And so that's what the height of this thing is gonna be, x minus x squared. So what's left to identify is what's the radius? Now the radius is gonna be the distance from your cross section to the axis right here. Now we know the total distance from the y-axis to this axis, it's gonna be two, all right? We also know the distance from the y-axis to this cross section right here, it's x, that's what the x coordinate represents. So what we need to figure out, this right here is the radius we're looking for, r. And so we wanna take the difference of those two values, two minus x, uh, and that will give us the radius of this rotation here. And once you have all the pieces, the radius, the height, and the thickness, we're then ready to set up our integral. The volume is gonna equal two pi, the integral of your radius, which we got as two minus x, uh, the height, which was x minus x squared, and then the thickness, which is gonna be a dx right here. Now we have to still determine what are the bounds of integration. We're integrating with respect to x, so we're gonna be looking for x coordinates. X equals zero, x equals, z, uh, x equals something up to x equals something. I gave one away there. The leftmost f x coordinate is gonna be x equals zero, this point right here. So that goes on the lower bound. And what's the rightmost coordinate? Um, well, it did tell us we were going to x equals two, uh, but we need to figure out this x coordinate of the function. Uh, so this y equals x minus x squared, what are its x coordinates? If we factor out the x, we're left with one minus x, and so we see the x coordinates are zero, which we already noticed, and then one. So we're gonna integrate from zero to one. Uh, in order to proceed, we're gonna to need to FOIL this thing out, all those, for all those possible terms, first inside, first outside, inside, last. So with the typical FOIL, we get two pi, times the integral from zero to one, we're gonna get a two x minus two x squared. We're gonna get negative x squared and then a positive x cubed dx. Uh, there are like terms with the quadratics, negative two x and negative x squared, a negative two x squared and then a negative x squared. Uh, combining like terms there, we end up with a two x minus three x squared plus x cubed. And so that thing is now ready to integrate. Let me slide this up so we have some more room to write. Uh, so using the power rule, uh, antiderivative of, x squared of 2x is an x squared. Antiderivative of the negative 3x squared is a negative x cubed. And the antiderivative of x cubed is x to the fourth over four. Plug in zero and one. Zero will make everything vanish. Plug in in one, Powers of one are always one, so we'll get a bunch, a bunch of terms there. One of them's a fraction. Uh, we'll end up with a one minus one plus a fourth. Uh, the two ones will cancel because one's positive, one's negative. And so we get two pi times a fourth, which is gonna give us pi halves as the volume of this solid revolution. Most excellent there. And so much like the washer method, we can adapt for alternative axes of revolution, right? It doesn't always have to be the x-axis or the y-axis. 
Um, for the washer method, you have to be very careful though because you have this inner radius and this outer radius, both of which are affected by the location of the axis revolution. Um, in this one, since we're only looking at the average radius, um, the average radius is just going to be the location of it, in this case x equals 2, and then you subtract from it the, the location of the cross section, which is x. So you're shifting the axis away from the y-axis. It doesn't have to complicate the calculation that much. Instead of having an r in this location, oh, I mean, it's still the radius, but instead of an x, you get something like 2 minus x. Um, and so you'll, you'll see some of these things in the homework, of course. Uh, just make a slight adaptation if your radius um, is something other than the y-axis. And it doesn't, it doesn't like it's, it's amazing how it doesn't actually complicate uh, the integral that much, just making a slight change um, is pretty powerful. And so it, it, it's quite impressive how versatile the shell method is for this sort of shifting of the axis there.